everyone, this is meteorologist Joel Curtis with your Alaska Weather TV show. Starting out, we'll have a look at King Salmon, right where our low pressure system is aimed today. And uh, it's looking pretty grim out there, uh, not a lot of good ceiling or visibility. When we look at Fort Yukon, however, they get a very brief look at the sun today around noon. And uh, uh, things are uh, looking pretty good up there, although cold. So we have a lot of uh, hazardous weather going on, uh, uh, lots of warnings and uh, advisories. First of all, we have uh, blizzards for just about all of southwestern Alaska from all the way from uh, Cape Ramonsoff, Bethel, Dillingham, uh, King Salmon, Coal Bay, and then in Alaska and Dutch Harbor uh, for snow, blowing snow, and uh, whiteout conditions. For Kodiak, we have a high wind warning tonight. Winter storm for the eastern Kenai Peninsula, including Whittier, Seward, and the Seward Highway, and that's until about 6 a.m. on Friday. A winter storm for Yakutat into Friday, uh, also for Haines and Skagway, winter storm. A uh, winter storm for the Misty Fjords, including Hyder, and that's to 9 p.m. on Friday. That's a long laster there. And then winter weather advisories for the Western Seward Peninsula, St. Lawrence Island, Sleep Mute, Tanana, Fairbanks, Delta Junction, and we also have a winter weather advisory until noon and Friday for Juneau. So having a look at our satellite image here, we've got, uh, uh, first of all, that low really winding up going right into Bristol Bay. Uh, secondary low uh, south of, uh, in, of Anadir in the northern Bering Sea, and that one is shaping up into a front. Uh, we also have a uh, frontal system uh, that's now worked its way into the Gulf, as you'll see on our surface maps in just a moment. Uh, lots of higher clouds, and then uh, the backside of the front is in the, uh, western Bering, in the eastern Bering Sea. Uh, also, quite a bit of precipitation aimed at southeast Alaska. So here's our situation. A very deep low pressure system with a lot of wind and it's really causing a lot of blowing snow down to 959 millibars. Uh, this afternoon, evening, it's going to be right about over Nat Neck at 959 millibars. Lots of front wrapped around that system, as you saw in the satellite image. Rain out over the Gulf, but every place else onshore is snow, either snow showers or, uh, or snow falling down. Uh, then for tonight's weather, uh, that system reforms and ends up in the Gulf of Alaska off the Kenai Peninsula. It's uh, going to reduce, uh, fill a little bit to 961 millibars, but the front will be completely wrapped around it, uh, bringing snow and blowing snow just about everywhere in southern Alaska, and then uh, also snow up to uh, the uh, Panhandle. Lots of snow showers over the Bering Sea. Now that cold air is starting to slip south in a lot of northerly flow that we see in the Bering Sea. And then by Friday afternoon, 962 millibars, so that low is moving very, very slow, and it's not, uh, um, it's not filling very quickly. So it's still a pretty strong system, blowing snow over is possible for all of western Alaska and with this northerly flow behind a cold front that has now moved off the uh, Alaska Peninsula and uh, also south of the Aleutians. And then uh, there's still a little bit of warm air trapped in the Gulf, but um, the, the front has moved onshore into the Panhandle with a secondary low up Dixon entrance about 984 millibars or so. But again, uh, expect snow onshore there in the Panhandle. 
And then uh, for Saturday, that low uh, finally starts to weaken a little bit, 969 millibars. But look at all the lines on the map for Cook Inlet and down through Kennedy Entrance and Kodiak. Still a lot of wind. Any place where we have loose snow, it's going to be blowing snow. Uh, lots of snow showers out over the Gulf. Some little light snow over the central and northern interior, as well as a Bering Sea. And then we also see a slug of warm air coming up to the western Aleutians. But that system is staying pretty much out there with the strong high pressure over Siberia and also south of the central Aleutians. So looking at our temperatures uh, Friday morning, temperatures generally in the 30s except to 25 for Skagway for the Panhandle, 28 for Yakutat, uh, minus 1 for uh, Glen Allen and uh, Golcana. 14 for Talkeetna, 20 for Anchorage, 23 to, for Homer, and 24 for, for Kodiak with all that wind and cold advection over there. And then for a high temperatures Friday afternoon, temperatures still in the 30s uh, for, the, for the Panhandle, 33 for Yakutat, 8 for Glen Allen, 22 for Talkeetna, 28 for Valdez, 24 for, for Anchorage, and 28 for Homer, and uh, up up to 30 for Kodiak Island. And then we have uh, for our low temperature Saturday morning, uh, temperatures generally in the, in the 20s, uh, down all the way to 20 when we get to Skagway, 23 for Yakutat, minus one for Glen Allen, eight for Talkeetna, 15 for Valdez, 11 for Anchorage, 10 for Kenai, 14 for Homer, and 12 for Kodiak Island. And then as we get for a high temperature Saturday afternoon, uh, 26 for Skagway, uh, just barely cracking freezing for the southern panhandle, 29 for, for Yakutat, 3 for Glen Allen, 11 for Talkeetna, 13 for Anchorage and Kenai, 19 for Homer, and then 21 for Valdez and 19 for uh, Kodiak Island. For low temperatures Friday morning on the north slopes, uh, single digits uh, along the Chukchi Sea in the, in the negative digits, but uh, down to minus 18 for, for Dead Horse, uh, minus 9 for Fort Yukon, and it gets a little warmer as we get further south, 4 for Fairbanks, uh, minus 8 for Kotzebue, minus 8 for Nome, and 7 for St. Lawrence Island. And then for our high temperatures Friday afternoon, again, uh, some single digits, but negative really uh, in the general scheme of things. Uh, plus 2 for Fort Yukon, plus 6 for Fairbanks, uh, minus 6 for Kotzebue, minus 4 for Nome. So the colder air is on that side, closer to that Siberian high. And then for Saturday morning, again, uh, pretty cold temperatures along the uh, north slope there, minus 11 for Dead Horse, uh, minus 12 for Point Hope, uh, minus 2 for Fort Yukon, minus 6 for Fairbanks, and uh, well into the minus teens for western, uh, the northwestern portion of Alaska on the in inland areas. And then for Saturday afternoon, again, uh, negative single digits all along the uh, north slope. Um, my, uh, plus one for Fort Yukon, zero for Fairbanks, uh, minus 11 for Kotzebue, minus 13 for Nome, and uh, uh, pretty cold still out west. For southwestern Alaska, we've got uh, uh, temperatures really uh, dropping down in those northerly winds. Um, in the 11-12 uh, category for for, uh, south, for the Bristol Bay area, and then uh, in the 20s as we go out the Aleutians, uh, then uh, at our high temperatures Friday afternoon, 8 for Bethel, 19 for Dillingham, 18 for King Salmon, and then uh, in the 30s uh, for a lot of the areas along the Aleutians, 26 for the Pribilofs. And then uh, low temperature Saturday morning, again, well down in the negative teens uh, for southwestern Alaska, uh, but you get in the positive category of uh, in the uh, lower 20s and uh, 21 for the Privilofs and uh, uh, 31 for ADAT. And then for Saturday afternoon, our high temperature is still in the negative digits there for south, uh, southwestern Alaska due to that cold northerly flow. Uh, but it gets up to uh, 26 as we get down to Cold Bay, uh, 36 for Dutch Harbor, and 27 for out in the Privilofs. So our six to 10 day outlook uh, below normal temperatures for a big portion of the state uh, is especially likely over in the uh, Juneau area. Uh, precipitation, a, a little hint of above normal for the central interior. 
uh, below normal for the uh, um, southeastern Alaska again and uh, Yakutat. And then for our 8 to 14 day uh, precipitation outlook, below normal for the southeastern portion of the state, but a little bit above normal for the uh, west coast and the western interior. So we're still getting those earthquake swarms out there off of Oregon, uh, uh, 50 more uh, little earthquakes. Uh, the highest ones have been about uh, 5.1, but there is definitely no tsunamis. And this is a very interesting phenomenon, and I would suggest if you're interested, go ahead and get on the internet and uh, check it out. So uh, again, uh, hazardous weather, lots of blizzards in the southwest, uh, winter storms as we get to Kodiak, high wind for Kodiak, uh, winter storms for the Kenai Peninsula, and then as you go over, winter storms for the Juneau and uh, Panhandle area. So that's all the time we have. Please stay safe out there and dial in on your weather. Thank you. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. And now for your aviation weather. Starting out with a flying weather Friday morning, we have some IFR over southwestern Alaska. Also along the Gulf Coast from the uh, southern end of the Kenai Peninsula through Prince William Sound over to Yakutat and all of the Panhandle. A little bit of IFR for the Yukon Flats area as well as a little bit uh, for the Chukchi Sea area. And then uh, for uh, Friday afternoon, we have uh, some IFR along again along the Chukchi Sea coast, uh, also over the central interior, a little bit over uh, uh, southwestern Alaska, uh, particularly the Bethel area. Uh, some IFR as the wind blows up against the Alaska Peninsula, also IFR from Prince William Sound over through Yakutat and for uh, much of the southeastern Alaska panhandle. For Saturday morning, uh, IFR again along the Chukchi Sea coast, uh, also uh, some along the uh, Beaufort Sea, uh, central interior for IFR, and then also the Alaska Peninsula still with those northerly winds pushing up some uh, clouds there. Uh, also for, for uh, Glacier Bay, and then for the Misty Fjords area of southeast Alaska. And then for Saturday afternoon, uh, IFR again along the Chukchi and Beaufort Sea coasts, uh, also from southwestern Alaska, uh, Kuskokwim Delta, uh, also uh, the central interior IFR and some IFR again moving into the western Aleutians. Anatovic Pass on Friday, marginal VFR. Attican, marginal VFR. Lake Clark and Merrill, marginal VFR becoming VFR. Rainy Pass, marginal VFR. Windy Pass, marginal VFR. Isol Pass, marginal VFR. Mentasta Pass, marginal VFR. Tanita Pass, IFR. Portage Pass, IFR. Chilkoot and White Pass, IFR with some, uh, also windy with some turbulence. Our freezing levels on Friday morning uh, at the surface for almost the entire state except for a small portion of Prince of Wales Island and Baranoff Island. Uh, you have to get up to 2,000 feet for Haida Gwaii. For icing on Friday, uh, looking at a uh, isolated moderate uh, for the western Gulf Coast including Kodiak Island and the northern uh, Alaska Peninsula on up the Kenai Peninsula but then when we get over into southeast, considerable moderate icing uh, between 3,000 and 8,000 feet. For our jet stream on Friday, uh, generally the jet is missing the state. Uh, however, we do have one branch that comes across the central Aleutians at about 110 to 120 knots. And then uh, the jet proceeds uh, south of the Gulf on over into British Columbia and Vancouver Island. At our 9,000 foot winds, however, we do have some northerly shaping up for uh, southwestern Alaska, about northerly about 50 knots, 60 knots when it gets to the Alaska Peninsula, and then 70 as you get out into the uh, far southwestern Gulf of Alaska. Uh, that's all circulating around that uh, low pressure system that's steadily but very slowly moving east. And then uh, it looks like about 35 knot westerlies as you get over to the panhandle. Otherwise, uh, wind is pretty much missing state. At 3,000 foot winds, 
Uh, again, those northerlies coming down through the Bering Strait, starting out at about 35, 40 knots or so, getting up to 55 knots as you get to the southwestern capes, and then uh, uh, Cape Newenham, for example. And then as we get down to the Alaska Peninsula, about 55 knots as it crosses the peninsula, also 55 knots coming out of Kennedy Entrance, all circulating around that low in the Gulf of Alaska. Uh, the wind really tapers off as it makes it onshore over into southeast Alaska. So this sets up our turbulence. We do have uh, isolated moderate turbulence for a large portion of the western portion of the state and then it's considerable moderate as you get inland a little bit, also for St. Lawrence Island and the Point Hope area, and then considerable moderate all out across the Aleutians. That's about surface to 3,000 feet. Where we're really concerned for isolated severe is for the Alaska Peninsula down to Unimac Island, including Kodiak Island and the Lake Clark and Lake Iliamna areas surface to 6,000 feet low-level wind shear, and then also some turbulence over in southeast Alaska below 4,000 feet, considerable moderate, with low-level wind shear. Fly safe out there. This is very exciting, Star Peeps. One of the best meteor showers of the year, the Geminids, peaks next week on December 14th. Let me get you prepped. First, you need to find the constellation Gemini. Hit the skies at 1 a.m. and look south. You should see Orion there. And if you draw a line up and left through Orion using Rigel and Betelgeuse's guides, it'll point right at Castor and Pollux, the twin stars of Gemini. Once you've got your positioning, get warm and cozy because the Geminids can peak with 120 meteors an hour. They'll continue all night until pre-dawn. Once the moon sets, it'll be super dark. Yay! The Geminids consist of rocky, slow-moving debris from the asteroid Phaeton. This means they can cause big yellow streaks that persist for some time. You could get quite the show. Share pictures if you take some. Get out there, stay warm, and keep looking up. We're at Vandenberg Air Force Base for about 20 minutes before the launch of ISAT-2. You might see the white light off in the distance. That's the Delta II rocket. It's, it kind of feels like an idea that was always going to just made, stay an idea. Uh, but no, it's it's real. It's sitting on top of the rocket. You know, and for me, it's kind of surreal. Like you say, it's been 10 years and it's hard to believe. It's like, we're, we're really here? This is really about to happen? It's totally cool. This is Dr. Tom Newman. Over the years, his work has taken him to some pretty remote areas to study changes in the ice regions of our planet. And his research, among many others, has defined the goals of the new NASA satellite, the Ice, Cloud, and Land Elevation Satellite 2, or ISAT-2. The story of ISAT-2 really begins with ISAT-1. ISAT told us all kinds of cool things about the ice sheet and about sea ice that we didn't really know to ask. That data allowed us to measure elevation change of ice sheets in a way that we hadn't been able to before and showed that all the action on the ice sheets, the places that were really changing quickly, were around the edges. So when we were thinking about what could we do better next time, we knew that was one key component. In addition to the edges of the ice sheets, ISAT-2 needed to measure a dimension of sea ice that remained elusive, its thickness. To figure out how thick sea ice is, you can measure the height of ice sticking out of the ocean, or freeboard, and compare it to the height of water between the sea ice flows, called leads. The problem is, sea ice is really dynamic, and those cracks open and close various places in the ice pack throughout the day, throughout the year, and what we need to do is have measurements of the ocean whenever it's available, wherever it occurs in the sea ice pack. To solve that problem, ISAT-2 was designed with a fast pulsing laser instrument to take precise, near-continuous measurements across its three pairs of beams. For 10 years, everything about the mission was designed to measure rapid changes in the most rapidly changing part of the cryosphere. But it has to get into space first. 
but it's a huge, huge transition going from the ground to in space. We've spent the better part of 10 years, thousands of people have been involved, and actually seeing the rocket there on the pad with all of that work kind of all put together in, in one place, it's, it's pretty amazing. And then getting up in the middle of the night to go watch the actual launch, it's sort of surreal in a way because you've put so much time into it for so long and, and actually seeing it over there, it's like, <laughs> whoa, you know, it's, uh, it's a big deal. There it went. That was Atlas. The last Delta II heading on up. So Atlas has been turned on over the course of the first few weeks of the mission, uh, really culminating for us with the, with the laser. So this is our first look at sea ice data uh, from ISAT-2, and it looks fantastic. The signal levels look great. We've got plenty of photons there. We're capturing ridges. We can clearly see the ocean. Um, all sorts of cool stuff in there, and this is just our first data. It's only going to get better from here on out. The data from ISAT-2 is well on its way into digging deeper into the unknown dimensions of sea ice, ice sheets, and glaciers. It will shed light on changes in sea level and global weather patterns, and once again find new things about ice we didn't know to ask. So my heart is definitely racing. I don't know about anyone else's. This is the stuff nerds dream of. A uh, slight chance the flight may see ice at two in their center windscreen. 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, That's gonna five, happen. four, three, two. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Hi everyone, now for marine weather segment. First of all, sea ice will be advancing in the northerlies uh, around 10 to 20 knots, uh, 10 to 20 miles per day uh, over the next few days. Uh, heavy freezing spray in the northern Bering Sea and freezing spray on the west side of the Gulf. For Friday's marine forecast, we have uh, on the inside waters uh, 20 to 35 knots southerlies, uh, up to, gusts up to 40, and seas up to 16 feet in clearance rate otherwise but I am four feet on the inside waters. On the outside waters uh, Friday we have uh, onshore flow uh, essentially uh, 25 to 35 knots seas up to 23 feet and then for Saturdays uh, when we have some uh, northerlies kicking in on the inside Lynn Canal 35 knots gale and sea six feet otherwise around 15 knots and seas up to five feet in the south. And then circulation uh, on the outside, uh, wind uh, 20 to 25 knots, and our maximum seas on the outside 17 feet. For South Central, we have uh, uh, 30 to 45 knots on the outside, 25 knots in Prince William Sound. 50 storm force, gust of 60 out of the Kennedy entrance, and maximum sea, uh, sea state there, uh, 17 feet, 23 feet uh, uh, off of Middleton Island. And then for Saturday's forecast, uh, again, that outflow wind, uh, storm force 50, seas 22 feet coming out of Kennedy entrance, uh, otherwise uh, 20 to 30 knots on the outside and uh, seas up to 12 feet. For Friday's marine forecast for the peninsula, uh, storm force 50, uh, ranging to 45 knots on the outside, a few gusts to 60, and then seas maximum 21 feet on, on the Bering Sea side uh, of 40 to 45 knots, seas up to 22 feet. And then for Saturday's marine forecast, uh, storm force 50 to 55 knots on the outside, seas ranging up to 22 feet, and 40 to 45 knots on the Bering Sea side, seas up to 15 feet. For the Aleutian chain, uh, wind ranging from 
uh, 20 to 30 knots in the west, but uh, 40 to 50 knots storm force on the uh, eastern sections of the Aleutians, generally northwesterly there with seas up to 26 feet. And then on Saturday, uh, the wind will be uh, coming around the, uh, the surface high, uh, wind uh, 20 to 35 knots, seas up to about 15 feet or so. And then for the west side, uh, southeasterly is kicking in up to 45 knots, seas 12 feet. For uh, the west coast, uh, wind uh, in those northerlies, uh, 30, ranging up to 40 knots, seas 19 feet for the Pribilofs. And then for Saturday, uh, northerlies uh, 25, all the way up to 40 knots, seas 10 feet in the Pribilofs. For our uh, Arctic coast, we do have um, 10 to 20 knots along the north slope, but gale gets up to 35 knots uh, through the Bering Strait, uh, seas up to 10 feet as you get down through the Bering Strait. And then for Saturday, uh, we do have uh, 15 to 25 knots along the north slope over the ice-covered waters, but we get uh, uh, northerly, uh, northwesterly 30 knots and sea six feet down through the Bering Strait. So recap of the, the weather, we've got that 961 storm in just south of the uh, Kenai Peninsula, big front wrapped around it, lots of snow, uh, snow showers, Everywhere that possible, there will be blowing snow around this strong weather system. And then as we get into Friday's weather, that low is slowly, slowly moving eastward. And it's still 962 millibars, lots of blowing snow over much of the mainland portion of Alaska. Uh, plenty of snowfall associated with the frontal systems. Uh, the warm air is now getting uh, uh, cinched up there in the Gulf. And then for Saturday, finally that low weakens to 969 millibars, snow all around the area. We do have uh, very strong outflow winds in the western Gulf and blowing snow. So uh, please pay attention to all these warnings that are out. Mind the freezing spray in the Gulf of Alaska. And also we need to uh, pay attention to uh, potentially some freezing spray developing with outflow winds uh, later in the weekend uh, for Southeast Alaska. So thanks for tuning in and please keep a weather eye out. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.